Hello everybody, this is Pradeep, a lecturer of English from Vishwamanava Composite PU College, Chitradurga. Now, in this present session, I am going forward to present my views over the short play called it A Sunny Morning, written by Seraphin and Joaquin Alvarez Quintero. Before having gone through with the play A Sunny Morning, I want every one of you to know about the biography of Seraphin and Joaquin Alvarez Quintero. These two playwrights were from Spain and known as Golden Boys of Madrid Theatre. Certainly a question that rises in your mind that is why were they given such a name is that they had contributed a lot towards the art and literature of Spain using the Spanish language. Much of their writing merely focused on comedies. Both of them altogether had composed more than 200 plays which had been translated into many living languages of the world. Those 200 plays that were written by Seraphine and Joaquin Alvarez Quintero had portrayed the life, the people and their mannerisms and the speeches of their native place Andalusia situated at southern Spain. These two noted and prolific playwrights of Spain were found, were seen in the earlier decades of Spain. This is all about the brief biography of Seraphine and Joaquin Alvarez Quintero. Let us make a move on to the main play, A Sunny Morning. Now I am going to introduce you people, the major characters, named them Donalara, who is a female protagonist of this play. When the story opens, she turns into 70 years of age. She has appointed one of her housemaids, called her as Petra. In contrast to the above, female characters, we have male characters to see, that is Don Gonzalo, who is a male protagonist of this sunny morning, who, is, who has also turned 70 years of age like Dona Lara. On the other hand, we have another assistant character to see, that is Zunaito, who is opted as a male servant who can also be called an attendant too. These four characters play a major role in making a good and thoughtful play A Sunny Morning. Before going through this play, I wanted to convey you people one thing that is you may see a drama or a play uh, consisting of many acts and scenes in them. But uh, in terms of this uh, sunny morning, it has only one scene in it. That's why it is considered to be one of the shortest play ever written by Seraphin and Joaquin Alvarez Quintero. And uh, further, you should keep in your mind that the central theme of this uh, play. Coming on to the central theme or an idea of any prose or any poem, a certain prose or poem may have a central idea. Throughout the whole poem or a prose, we can see how do the lines that are portrayed by any author or any poet or poetess revolve around a central idea. Pertaining to this sunny morning, it has a revolved all the lines that are portrayed or written by Seraphin and Joaquin Alvarez Pintero as revolved around one certain theme or an idea that is a romantic love story in between the two major characters named them as Dona Lara and Don Gonzalo. When these two characters 
were at their younger age had fallen in love each other for a long time but a cruel fate or destiny that interrupted in between their love and uh, that as uh, caused a uh, damage to their love so their love was uh, broken now when the story opens both these two characters are at their are at the 70 years of old both of them happen to meet each other in the park of uh, madrid when the story opens up let us go through this uh, sunny morning from now on when the s- scene opens up what is the scene on the stage is that why have i mentioned a stage is that you might have seen while watching a movie or uh, any historical background movie on your television you might see some people getting involved in any movie the characters uh, the characters are made by the producer to enact their roles even today we can see some movies are being produced in western countries enacted by the major characters in the same way this sunny morning is also being enacted here when the curtains are being drawn when the story is going to play what is the scene on the stage is that it is a sunny morning sunny morning in the sense when the sun is shining very brighter than usual ever before when the story unfolds what is the scene on the stage is that the sun looks very brighter it is such a morning when the sun looks very brighter and in a retired corner what is further seen on the stage is that there is a corner in a park that is a retired corner where no people would go there to sit on a bench it is the place the corner is no longer in active in active mode which means it is like a deserted land in another sense it can also be called as no man's land it is such a retired corner of a park here we can see one of the park that is built by the bureaucrats or administrators of a madrid city here the mentioning of the city of madrid it is one of the capital city of spain currently the whole story of a sunny morning takes place only in the park of uh, madrid and uh, i want to convey you people another thing that is uh, the whole story is in the form of a conversation the whole conversation that is left in a humorous vein that would certainly brings uh, a reader a smile on their face until we get the end of the play of this sunny morning the whole story is left in a humorous conversation and uh, some ironical statements so have been used by seraphin and jacquin alvarez quinters and uh, when the story gets uh, progressed what do we see is that uh, the two playwrights uh, let uh, all the readers to know that when the story begins it is an autumn season autumn season it is one of the season of a year when the leaves of the tree fall down it is a contradictory word to a spring season in the spring season the leaves of the same tree are being grown where has in the autumn season the same leaves will fall down and uh, a bench at right as it is usually a park the administrator or bureaucrats have placed some benches in the park to uh, to let the people of that locality to come inside the park and to spend their leisure time in the park so a bench has been placed in the right side of the park of this madrid and now 
the two playwrights have introduced has a major character that is donalara who is who is a female protagonist of this play this donalara she is a handsome woman especially you people may know that the term handsome is frequently being used only for a man but while describe while describing about a woman no physical gesture or woman no physical property we can also use this word handsome to describe the physical property of a woman that's why seraphin and jacquin alvarez quinto have used this word handsome to describe the beauty of dona lara that's why the the playwrights have told us that she is a handsome woman and white haired old lady of about 70 and further the playwrights let us to know that both uh, the main character female protagonist dona lara has nourished or developed white or gray hairs on her head she is now all around a 70 years of age she is on the verge of 70 years of old at the beginning of this story when she gets herself into the park she is refined in her appearance when someone sees at her when someone confronts her in the park her physical appearance is like this she is very refined in her nature which means so she is very civilized woman and she is very uh, elegant woman in her nature she is such a woman and she has been left with a bright eyes she has uh, possessed a brighter eyes even the bright eyes of her can enchant many others attention or highs brighter highs even fascinated someone uh, someone's attention and her entire manner giving evidence to us the mannerism now both the playwrights uh, speaks about her mannerism when she wherever she is when she produces her mannerism even that could do give us a witness to know more about this lady character dona lara her mannerism that she has ever shown before any other character that certainly can give us a witness which means we have been we have witnessed something more about this character that despite her age apart from her age already we have come to know that she uh, she is on the verge of a 70 years of old she has already crossed a uh, 70 years she has lost her uh, physical strength and uh, here uh, we also come to know that uh, a person one who has uh, come across a certain age of a uh, 70 we will uh, be sure that uh, that person uh, certainly would uh, lose his uh, potentiality in terms of his uh, physique apart from her uh, physical age of 70 her mental faculties are unimpaired unimpaired and unimpaired means uh, not damaged uh, in a sense uh, her uh, inner uh, faculty or inner uh, intelligence that is not fully damaged she is a uh, very strong enough in her uh, decisions in making a decision which means uh, she is uh, in her uh, in her intelligence so she is very strong enough she is such a woman even though she has lost her uh, physical strength has she has lost her physical strength she has entered into the park by putting her arm on on the shoulder of her homemade petra she wants to get the support to get herself into the park that's why as she has lost her physical strength she puts her hand on the arm of her homemade petra to get herself into the park now she enters into the park in her free hand she carries a 
parasol you people might have seen some women when they are out of their home they would carry a parasol which means uh, uh, a colored uh, a colorful umbrella in the similar way this uh, female protagonist dona lara has also carried one of the colorful umbrella she has uh, kept she has held one of the colorful umbrella in her hand as she has entered into the park which serves also as a cane this colorful umbrella which is being held in her hand that as a sarbudu as a assisting material which could help her a lot to move from one place to another place this works as a walking stick to her to get the help out of the cane let us uh, make a move on to a uh, next slide here as i told you people earlier the whole story is in the form of a uh, conversation now the conversation that begins uh, in between donalara and uh, petra at the especially at the beginning of this story what do we see is that uh, in the humorous convo in a humorous way that characters uh, involve in uh, talking each other now the conversation that begins over here in between donalara and petra now it is a turn to speak by lara lara says after getting entered into the park she says that i am so glad to be here now she is a part of the park as she gets entered into the park she feels very happy to be the part of it something that to uh, transforms in her that to uh, makes her to feel happy that's why she says that uh, she feels very glad she feels very happy to be the part of uh, the park and uh, she further keeps uh, saying that uh, she feared my seat her seat would be occupied that uh, which means that uh, she has a fear in her that is her seat would be occupied by someone else as she has observed many people are wandering there in the park loitering everywhere in the park she has uh, been left with a uh, one now confusion one now fear in her mind that is uh, her seat would uh, be taken away from someone else on the other hand she has produced another sentence that is what a beautiful morning i have today that is with a exclamation she exclaims saying that what a beautiful morning we have today in a sense what she is trying to tell us is that she has had a beautiful morning as it is a sunny morning and coming on to the three sentences which are produced so far by this uh, donalara what do we see is that uh, these uh, three sentences are contradictory statements uh, that are produced by donalara why am i saying is that uh, in the very first sentence uh, coming on to the first sentence uh, what have we got to see is that uh, she feels uh, very happy to be the part of the park she felt uh, she has felt very happy on the other hand coming on to the second sentence uh, meanwhile she has felt uh, fear has she who do uh, lose her bench as it is uh, as it may be occupied by someone else as many people uh, wander there in the park on the other hand in her confusion uh, state of mind she keeps uh, saying as uh, that uh, what a beautiful morning we have today that's why all these three sentences are uh, certainly all these three sentences certainly bring us a confusion why she is uh, saying these three sentences that uh, certainly would leave us in a dilemma to understand why she is saying like this in response to in response to the above three sentences so it is a turn to speak it is a turn to speak more by petra that uh, now petra answers uh, donalara that uh, the sun is 
very hot today in response to the in response to the above statement what a beautiful morning i have today to this sentence as a response petra answers her because the reason is that the sun looks very brighter than usual ever before that's why both of them have felt the warmth of the sun that's why today the today when they are in the park when they are inside the park both of them have felt the warmth especially by this donalara she has a has a, she has a told us that she has had a beautiful morning that's why petra gives her a reason the sun is very hot today the sun no, looks very brighter that's why we have a beautiful morning now donalara she has a told petra that is yes, you are only 20 now one of the fact one of the truth is revealed to us that petra is all around uh, only a 20 years of age at the beginning of this story where he has uh, donalara and don gonzalo are at their 70 years of old petra's age is also portrayed to us that is revealed to us that she is all around only a 20 years of age in between donalara and uh, petra there is a 50 years of gap in between them after saying these words by lara she sits down on the bench after finding her bench inside the park how do she how does she find her seat is that uh, in a park uh, we can see the bureaucrats and uh, the administrators of madrid uh, city have placed uh, a bench in the a uh, bench in the park to let the people and citizens of the madrid city to spend their whole leisure time in a park by sitting on it that's why as uh, many seats uh, as a uh, seats uh, as many benches have been placed in the park this uh, donalara she has found a seat and she sits on it to spend her time to take a relaxation uh, on it and uh, she says uh, further that oh i feel more tired today than usual with a exclamation she says she exclaims uh, saying that oh i feel more tired today than usual which means uh, here after having seen this statement uh, produced by donalara we certainly come to know that uh, not only today she has come into the park before this moment in the earlier days uh, she would come into the park and she remained uh, the whole day sitting on the benches that's why here we come to know that uh, uh, only today she has felt uh, more exhausted uh, than usual in the earlier days uh, she wouldn't be uh, tired than today that's why she makes this statement so over here and after saying this she has noticed at petra one who has stood in front of her and petra she states um, petra has been stared by donalara who seem who seems impatient after seeing petra donalara come to know donalara comes to know that she seems to be impatient which means so she has lost her temper which means so she is on her foot to go somewhere else to meet someone that's why she is not in a position to stand for a long time in front of this donalara to be a part of the to region where donalara sits on a bench that's why here both the writers both the player right so have mentioned that uh, petra she seems so uh, to be impatient as uh, she has lost her temper and uh, donalara after finding her temperament uh, she ordered her saying that uh, you can go if you wish to chat with your god which means uh, after finding the word of god we will certainly come to know that uh, the god might be the beloved boy or man of this petra that's why she as advised 
she has a sorry she has a donalara has ordered this so petra to go to have some words so with her beloved god that's why in response to the above words of lara petra has responded donalara so saying so that he is not mind senora he is one of the uh, typical term of uh, spanish language is being used here that is senora senora in a sense uh, senora is a spanish term that is uh, especially being used for women in spain it is uh, similar to the madam in english language and here what do we see is that petra she is not uh, in a position to accept that uh, he only belongs to her that's why she says that uh, he doesn't the god doesn't belongs to her which means uh, after having heard uh, the words uh, from donalara that uh, if you want to have some chat if you want to have a chat with your beloved god you can go after having received uh, this word petra says that uh, she, uh, she might uh, feel humiliation to receive those words so uh, that's why she doesn't agree with her words uh, so petra says that uh, the god that uh, the god he doesn't belongs to me he doesn't belong to me she says he doesn't to the sorry he belongs to the park she tells uh, donalara that uh, more than to me he only the god only belongs to the park he is the only possession of the park as he keeps watching the peoples coming into the park and going out of the park that's why he is only the possession of the park the park only claims that he only belongs to the park donalara she says that he belongs more to you than he does to the park in response to the petra's words donalara remarks that he only belongs more to you than he belongs to the park though he is the god of this park he only belongs to you as he is evo beloved she says and you can go and find him and further donalara has advised petra that saying that you can go to him wherever he is you can go and find him and get him back but you remain within a calling distance when i find myself a necessity to call you you must be back when i call you that's why you must remain or stay with him for no time and uh, you must be within a calling distance when whenever i call you you must uh, my voice must be audible to you my voice must be heard to you within a short time you must be back on this condition donalara allows this petra to go. petra to uh, go to our beloved god petra after having received these words from donalara petra uh, responses to donalara that uh, i see him over there waiting for me i think uh, she feels very happy to receive those words from lara that she belongs only to you rather than to the park after having received received these words from lara petra she feels very happy to hear those words from lara that's why petra says uh, that uh, i see him over there waiting for me only she has already observed the god waiting for the arrival of the petra into the park already she has uh, observed or noticed her beloved god waiting for her only near the uh, in, uh, near the entrance of the park donalara she says that do not remain more than 10 minutes donalara here what she tells uh, petra that uh, you do not remain or stay for a long time that's why you should be within a calling distance and you shouldn't remain more than a 10 minutes you should be back within a 10 minutes on this condition petra is allowed by donalara to join her god now petra is turned to say more that very well senora after having received 
these words from Donalara. After being allowed by Donalara, she feels very happy as she is on her foot to go to meet her beloved god Petra. She says that very well, Sinora. In the term very well, it is a an expression of agreement when we admit with someone so statements we can make use of this word very well when we agree with someone else's statements normally it occurs at the beginning of our statement or sentence before beginning to start to utter or before beginning to say anything we can use this word very well to admit with the sentence to agree with the previous sentence that's why when uh, Petra agrees with the condition of this Donalara she says that very well Senora which means uh, all right all right Senora okay I will be back within uh, 10 minutes she agrees uh, on this condition put by uh, Donalara I told you people earlier that Senora is a term especially being used to the woman of Spain which is similar to uh, madam in the uh, English language and uh, when uh, after being allowed by Donalara Petra now walks towards the right side of the park now she is on her foot now she takes her steps down to the right side of the park now the now Petra takes her departure out of the presence of Donalara after saying all right and uh, when she takes her departure, Dona Lara, she has ordered her to wait for a moment. That's why she says that, wait a moment, there. Um, Dona Lara, she has told, she has ordered Petra to wait a moment. Petra, what does the Sonora wish? Uh, after having received this uh, order, by Donalara, she doesn't understand what uh, does uh, Donalara or uh, her maiden want to have from her. That's why she she has she has asked herself a question. That is, uh, what does uh, this Senora or madam wish to or want to have from me? She doesn't understand why she has uh, ordered me to stop for a moment or a minute. Now, Donalara's turn to speak more, that is uh, why she has uh, stopped uh, Petra to go forward to get her. God is that uh, Donalara has asked uh, Petra to give her a uh, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs is a uh, uh, bread pieces, which means uh, um, bread pieces. Uh, to feed the pigeons, pigeons in the sense the doves. The doves are everywhere in the park, that's why. That's why these two characters, Donalara and Petra, have carried many bread pieces into the park. As they carried many bread pieces into the park earlier, when the conversation initially has uh, taken place between them, she has forgotten to ask Petra, Petra a bread pieces. Now she, now, Pet, uh, now Donalara has uh, asked uh, Petra, to give her a uh, bread pieces to feed the pigeons in the park. Now, after being asked, Petra says that I don't know what is the matter with me. Now she doesn't understand what is this uh, Donalara asking for. Even this uh, Petra is not in a position to understand the words of this. Donalara, she doesn't understand what is she asking for. That's why she says that what is the matter with me? I can't understand. That's uh, that is what is told by Petra. Donalara smiling after having received these words from Petra. Donalara, she has produced a smile on her face. I do, which means she understand what is the matter with uh, you. I understand your position, that is what she says. Your head is where your heart is with the guard. Now, Donalara has told Petra that your heart is only with the guard. As she has fallen in love 
with the god but uh, throughout the story there is no reference at all that uh, petra is in love with the god but uh, certainly we would come to know that uh, when she is on her foot to, to go out of the presence of this donalara to get her to get her uh, god uh, to get her god we might come to know that uh, she is in love with him that's why our heart is only with the god in the similar manner even our head even our thinking is also with the god too as uh, our uh, heart is with the im only which means uh, even our thinking even our conscience our consciousness uh, is with the god only certainly these kinds of uh, statements so uh, would bring us a humor so uh, statements which means uh, these would uh, bring us a smile on the read- readers mind that's why at the beginning of this uh, story i told you people that uh, this is uh, the whole story is a said in a humorous vein the whole story is narrated uh, using the comedy petra here sinora after having received those words from donalara she says that here sinora by stretching her hands forward she has uh, mm, held some bread pieces in her hand and she uh, wants to hand uh, those bread pieces down onto the hand of uh, donalara saying that uh, here bread pieces are in my hand sinora she says that uh, madam here are some bread pieces with me she says she hands so donalara a small bag and uh, after saying this statement uh, petra says so uh, sorry petra hands down petra gives so uh, some uh, bread pieces uh, which uh, have been kept in one of the bag she gives one of the bag which consists of many bread pieces in it she hands down she gives it to, to the hand of the donalara and uh, now she exits so uh, petra exits uh, by right side of the park after uh, making this statement now petra takes a departure out of the presence of donalara towards the right side of the park to meet her beloved god let us uh, uh, make a move on to the next slide here now the story that uh, gets uh, progressed here and uh, after having seen all these uh, uh, all these uh, talkings in between uh, donalara and uh, petra the same conversation that continues so uh, to go on donalara adios adios uh, it is uh, one of the typical uh, term uh, it is one of the typical term of english show when uh, we put ourselves in a position to say someone a goodbye when uh, we send someone uh, whenever we send someone to go out of our presence so we can use of this word adios which means goodbye she says uh, donalara says uh, her goodbye goodbye to petra by saying uh, adios now after uh, sending uh, petra towards her uh, beloved god petra is all alone sitting on her bench now she glances toward the trees at right side now she takes a quick look she donalara she takes a quick look she stares at a uh, she stares at the trees as it is one of the park many trees are being grown surrounding the park and uh, now she takes her look towards the trees at the right side of the park especially at the right side of the park many trees are being grown at the right side of the park uh, she has uh, taken her view she has uh, fixed her eyes towards the right side of the park to see something and uh, after having the scene towards the right side of the park what do we see is that uh, she says here they come certainly we would be left in a confusion that uh, what she is going to tell us what does the word uh, 
they refer to ear certainly we would be left in a confusion to understand that what does this word they refer to ear and uh, we will uh, come to know later about the word they who does it refer to hear i will tell the people who does this uh, word they refer to hear they refers to the pigeons or uh, doves so after having the scene towards the right side of the park she has witnessed the presence of uh, the pigeons as they are approaching towards her and she keeps saying that they knew just went to expect uh, expect me they knew who does this word refer to as i told you earlier that uh, they refers to the pigeons those pigeons now they are aware that when to expect me inside the park when would i come inside the park is uh, probably known to the pigeons that's why they have been here coming towards or approaching towards me from right side of the park all the pigeons are coming towards this uh, donalara as uh, all the pigeons have expected uh, donalara to give them a uh, bread pieces that's why donalara is uh, of her opinion that uh, all those pigeons uh, would know that uh, when i would uh, come into the park that's why it is expected by the pigeons that uh, when i would uh, at what time i would uh, come into the park she rises and uh, walks towards the right side and uh, after having seen the approaching of those pigeons uh, she rises from her sitting position from her uh, bench which means so has she sat earlier as she found her seat in the park she sat down on it to get the relaxation after having conversed with her petra who is a housemaid now she gets risen from her bench and now she takes her foot out of the bench and she walks towards the right side of the park park where she has uh, witnessed the presence of the coming of the pigeons in the opposite direction she has gone walking towards uh, the pigeons as they are approaching and she throws uh, three handful of uh, bread pieces or bread crumbs after having seen the presence of uh, the coming of uh, the pigeons she takes uh, out uh, three bread uh, three handful of uh, bit uh, bread pieces uh, to feed the to feed uh, those pigeons so uh, she takes uh, out uh, three handful of uh, bread pieces uh, uh, out of her bag and she has held all those uh, bread pieces in her hand to throw all those uh, three handful of bread bread pieces uh, towards so uh, all those uh, pigeons uh, after having seen the presence of those uh, pigeons so coming towards her and she says that uh, as uh, all those pigeons are approaching she says that uh, these are for the surprised her first uh, handful of uh, bread pieces so uh, are dedicated for the surprise here the uh, here the playwrights have divided have categorized these pigeons into three types so uh, that is uh, uh, later we will come to know those three types how they are made by the playwrights the first type of the pigeon is named as a spriced spriced in a sense of so one who is very active one who is very energetic one who is very enthusiastic in uh, eating or feeding that is uh, Uh, thrown by the people like our donalara in the donalara in the park that's why when she throws her first handful of bread pieces towards so the pigeons named her as a named them as a surprise while throwing her first handful of bread pieces towards so the pigeons she names them she names all those pigeons as a surprise who are very active in in nature and her second handful of bread pieces are dedicated for the gluttons that's why she says that these are for the gluttons gluttons in the sense of one who the pigeons one who eats more and more one who eats very excessively in a sense 
here her second or handful of bread pieces are being thrown by donalara towards the gluttons one who eat one who consumes so bread pieces more and excessively and she puts herself in a position to throw her third handful of bread pieces towards the third kind or third category of the pigeons that is while throwing her third handful of bread pieces she says these are for the little ones among all the surprise and uh, pigeons there is another one kind of another one type of pigeons are there that is named as a little ones amid all those pigeons of gluttons and sprites there is another category that is a little ones who are very little one in nature in their physic in their physical body there are they are very small living creature among all the pigeons or a third handful of bread pieces are thrown by this donalara towards the little ones which are the most persistent persistent which means why she is making a mention of the little ones or of persistent is that amidst all the surprised and gluttons so these little ones are always persistent who always stay in a one particular or certain point of a region they couldn't be able to move on they couldn't be able to fight or quarrel among all the pigeons to eat those bread uh, these bread pieces why because is that as a physical body of those small creatures so is very uh, smaller in nature as they have very little power in them as they have little strength in them they couldn't uh, fight with those gluttons and surprised that that's why those uh, little ones uh, always stick uh, onto a particular point of a region where they have stood that's why they are very persist persistent in nature they always uh, stick onto one particular place they stand at a one uh, region and she laughs she returns to her seat and watches with a pleased expression the pigeons feeding now she observes after throwing all those three handful of bread pieces towards all those three kinds of pigeons she produced a laugh and later we will come to know why she has produced such a laugh and here she has produced a laugh over here and after producing a laugh she has returned towards her seat where she was where she uh, was seated earlier <clears throat> now she came back to her seat where she was seated earlier when she got herself into the park along with her petra now she takes back her seat and sits down and watches and she keeps watching the pigeons as they start eating the bread pieces as they are being thrown by her she keeps looking at them and with a pleased expression what do we see in donalara is that she has been left with a uh, happiness she has kept uh, the happiness in her mind that's why what do we come to know is that uh, she is left with a uh, pleased expression even on her face what is seen is that uh, she has uh, held or uh, kept a uh, happiness on her face she, even though uh, uh, there is a saying that uh, face is a uh, index of mind everything uh, is a uh, known to us after having uh, someone so after having the seen someone's na someone so face that uh, how the condition of the people or a person is at a certain point of time here after uh, throwing all those uh, bread pieces towards the pigeon so she has been left with the happiness as she fed uh, as she as a fed uh, all those uh, pigeons with her bread uh, pieces the pigeons feeding now she has come to know that all the pigeons are feeding upon her bread pieces after having seen this she has been left with the happiness there 
that big one is always the first she keeps saying she now she has pointed her finger towards the right side of the park where all the pigeons are approaching towards her eating or feeding the bread pieces that are being thrown by her she says by pointing her finger there there at a certain a little distance there all the pigeons and there she sees there is a big one it is always first when among all the pigeons amidst all the pigeons there is a big one that is observed by this donalara she has seen uh, one of the big pigeons which is always first while feeding while feeding all the bread pieces thrown by this uh, thrown by the male the female protagonist that is donalara it always steps so it's a foot forward and it stands so first amidst all the among all the pigeons it comes always first while eating the while feeding the pigeons upon her bread pieces and i know him by his big head she is aware of that big one pigeons how does she come to know about that big pigeon is that by its big head only as the physical structure of the pigeon is very larger one as it is very big in the nature as it is very big in its physical structure she comes to know that it is it always comes first and also she, uh, the big pigeon is known to her by its big head even the not only the body of the big pigeon is a, a big one it is not a larger one even the head of even the head of that uh, particular pigeon is uh, a big one this is how this pigeon is known to our uh, donalara she keeps uh, saying that as she as uh, she stares uh, looking at uh, as uh, she stares uh, or uh, Uh, as she keeps her uh, high on all those uh, pigeons as they are feeding upon her uh, uh, bread pieces so she has observed further that she keeps uh, saying that now one comes forward now another one that's why she says now one now another the the pigeons are being followed by one and another one is being one is being followed by the another as they are feeding upon our bread comes now comes another now the two now the three one after another they start moving as they are of uh, feeding the bread crumbs now the three that uh, little fellow is the timid least amid all the pigeons so she has witnessed the presence of the little one who is always so persistent as i told you earlier one who uh, the pigeon one who always stick onto a particular region one who always sticks uh, onto a particular place it is uh, a least timid it is a little scared in a sense it doesn't feel the fear of any one it stands all alone amidst all the pigeons of a sprites to sprites and glutton so that's why she calls she says uh, the little fellow or little pigeon is one of the uh, least timid which means so uh, it doesn't uh, have a fear in it to stand amidst all the pigeons it uh, barely it uh, those uh, little uh, ones Dearly stand amidst all the pigeons. I believe he would eat from my hand. She has left some. She has been left with some bread pieces in her hand, which means so she has kept. She has held some bread pieces in her hand to give the bread pieces to the needy one. That's why she says that. i she is of she believes that he would he would what does this he refer to here is that the little one he would come to me and eat or consume from my hand he would come to me and consume so more bread pieces from my hand which i have held in my hand she says he would come to me and uh, 
and eat oh, more bread pieces oh, from my hand directly without oh, fighting oh, with oh, without oh, involving in a fight with the gluttons and uh, surprised oh. you would certainly come to me and oh, consume oh, the bread pieces oh, which i have kept in my hand that one takes oh, is a piece and flies up to the branch all alone that uh, as i have mentioned earlier the small pigeon the little fellow that comes up to her and uh, after having uh, taken the bread pieces out of her and that as uh, flown up to the branches all along of the trees that are being grown on the right side of the park after taking some bread pieces out of her and it has uh, flown up to the branches of the tree and he he is a philosopher now she considers the little one the little uh, the little pigeon as a philosopher why as she considered a small pigeon as a philosopher is that why she consider a uh, why she considers a small pigeon as a philosopher is that a philosopher in the sense of uh, a person one who goes with the uh, academic discipline of the philosophy one who rationally or scientifically thinks about the mannerisms of the people and one who always goes on working on the existentialist question of the human beings he doesn't accept anything blindly he always goes on thinking about any matter rationally or scientifically he is such a man philosopher one who goes with the academic discipline of a philosophy that's why by using its intelligence so he he hasn't fought with the gluttons and uh, surprised he has uh, the little one the little pigeon as he used to is wisdom and he has come up to me and has uh, taken many bread pieces out of my hand as uh, flown at the branches of the tree that's why she considers it as a philosopher but where do they all come from a a question that rises in donalara's mind that is she has asked herself a question where do all the pigeons all come from uh, who uh, how does all the pigeons come from who as uh, who as revealed them that uh, donalara would be here in the park at this uh, certain point of time that's why she has asked herself a question where do all these pigeons come f- uh, come from it uh, seems as if the news uh, had spread it uh, seems it appears the condition where all the pigeons are in where our uh, donalara is in in the park it appears as if the news of coming of donalara as uh, had uh, spread amidst all the pigeons when the news had been spread among all the pigeons they would come to know that donalara might come into the park that's why we would go up to her and take some bread pieces that's why she says herself in the form of an answer that it appears the news of my coming had spread among all the pigeons that's why all of them all of them have come here aha don't quarrel she has produced a smile over here aha by uttering the words aha don't quarrel she has suggested all those pigeons not to quarrel each other all the gluttons and surprised except the little ones all of them have involved in no quarreling each other that's why she has advised them not to quarrel each other she she says them she has advised all those pigeons so saying that there is enough for all there are there is plenty of bread pieces with me for all the pigeons so no need to quarrel each other don't involve in quarreling each other you will have plenty of bread pieces from me that's why she has suggested them not to quarrel each other as she has plenty of 
pred pieces with her and further she has added that i will bring more tomorrow and uh, she say, she has uh, told uh, all those uh, pigeons that uh, i will bring more pigeons uh, while coming on uh, tomorrow certainly i would be back into the park taking some bread pieces uh, for all the pigeons uh, by saying she has uh, consoled all the pigeons now what we see is that the playwrights have introduced uh, the readers and all of us as well the new character the male protagonist that is don gonzalo now don gonzalo is a male protagonist now he enters into the park along with his servant zunaito from the left side of the park now she is on the right side of the park in contrast to that in the opposite side of the right side of the park in the left side from the right side another character has been introduced by the playwrights that is don gonzalo along with is zunaito they have entered into the park coming from the left side of the park don gonzalo is an old gentleman of 70 years of age now the the character don gonzalo is an old man he is around a 70 years of age now we are uh, we all know about the age of this old don gonzalo after coming to now that he is around a 70 years of age don gonzalo is as the same as that of a as that of don lara as uh, uh, she is uh, on the verge of a 70 years of old both of them are at the same age of a 70 and he and uh, the physical characteristic of uh, the physical character uh, characteristics of uh, donalara has been revealed to hers by the two playwrights that is uh, he has developed a gouty in his foot a gouty it is one of the disease that is uh, nourished that is developed by don gonzalo in one of his foot it is a kind of a uh, disease that gives him a leg pain it uh, gives him a lot of pain while walking that is uh, as i told you earlier it is one of the disease gouty he has uh, developed such a disease in one of his leg and uh, he seems impatient now the another character of this uh, donalara is revealed to us that is uh, he seems impatient he has uh, uh, it is a scene that uh, this don gonzalo seems impatient as he has lost his temper as he has uh, developed uh, as he has uh, experienced a lot of pain in his leg though uh, that's why he seems impatient he leans upon zunatas arm earlier at the beginning of this story it is seen that dona lara as she has entered into the park she takes the help of her homemade petra by putting her arm over her shoulder in the similar manner this don gonzalo too he takes the support of his male servant zunatas arm to get himself into the park and drags his feet somewhat as he walks as he keeps walking towards the left side of the park to come midst of the to come into the midst of the park he drags his feet all along the way wherever he walks somewhat as he walks Uh, all the way when he is starts moving towards the left side of the park towards uh, left side of the park he drags uh, his foot all along the path wherever he walks along with his uh, zunaito as he has nourished or developed a gouty one of the kind of a disease which gives him a lot of uh, pain or ache in his leg uh, let us stop over here in the very next session we will uh, come to know we will uh, discuss about the we will next uh, we will uh, discuss about the 
rest of the play let us stop over here thank you thank you nanda